second one was also from kirodi man it's just like us gossiping in between rounds just and that's our ex president divyanshu and that's vice president vinayak and then our society member kamsha next to it and the photo below that is from dayal singh college also another tournament that we attended together do you want to add yeah no it's from tcac it's from tcac dcac ke pass ka smoking wala atta <laughs> probably don't didn't need to it. add that no no don't do drugs kids okay moving on so uh, another thing that we also do is just like every college has their own debating tournament we also host our own debating tournament which is like a child to all of us all the society members and it's called people speak and i think you will agree to us that if you join the society i can guarantee you if you end up or being a part of the organizing committee of people speak you'll have the best 3 days of your college life on campus because people speak is just the most fantastic time of the year for every society member and this is a photo that you'll see and uh, i think i'm particularly really proud of this photo because this is us of coming together to sit for a photograph after 3 days of intense hard work running around juggling between rounds getting food for people just being making sure everything's going all right in the auditorium and attending rooms and making sure that the debating rounds are running smoothly and doing like a lot of stuff that not just existed over those 3 days but also like from before like a couple of months to, then we spent planning the tournament and organizing it so this is our photo and the photo that is next to that is muskan do you know what, what it's called the game that we are playing i'm not sure exactly something like lemon race yeah something of that sort so what you do is you put an egg on a spoon and you hold the spoon in your mouth and you just walk a certain distance and the person who comes first wins so we use this for our finals or like semi finals round to decide which of the teams gets to decide whether the side opposition or their side government so this is something matlab that we do usually in tournaments through coin toss or like other stuff but just to make it a little bit more fun we did it through this race so whoever won the race could get to decide for that team so overall it's like a really fun experience we have a lot of fun we it's just an incredible experience that you would love to be a part of if you enter our society and here are more photos from our people speak so as you will see this is and again you could see that a lot of these photos are being taken in the dark that's because we stayed till night to make sure everything is done and completed and that's why we took our like group photographs and all at night so uh, the first one is again like our society member second photo is being taken when uh, like we were in the middle of organizing the tournament like 2 3 days before people speak and uh, the last one is just like these people were supposed to be working but all they were doing was that like they were clicking like a photograph of themselves of their sweatshirt so we were just to you know capture that someone clicked it from the staircase and this is just to show you that in the tournament itself the experience does not only comprise of a lot of work but also other things like just having fun clicking a lot of photos and just having a good experience together as a society so this is about people speak do you want to add something yeah no just just about like the bottom right photo what's funny is that those three are supposed to be running the room and anushka the one who's clicking the photo is also supposed to be helping them and i who is clicking this photo is also supposed to be helping them so like five of us are <laughs> ditching some work right now to do this normy photo session so it's just like a little thing but it's really a comic still in the sense you have to be in the situation to see that it's funny but it was funny i'm sure when you have your time at people speak later on in life you'll just look at these photos and just be really really happy okay moving forward uh this is uh us having a mock so the first photo that you see that's me speaking to the vice president at that time like in my batch it was arjun sharma 
so this is me arguing with him because i didn't agree to what he was saying so you can see that we are ha- having like a really heated conversation and the other three people are just chilling and like farak nahi pad raha hai kya ho raha hai and they're just attracting the dog towards them so this is just a general representation of how our debating mocks proceed and the second photo is of our ex president divyanshu who is chilling with one of our other uh, society members mahima at night in satya because i think a lot of you must be out station tournaments and when like physical colleges and all start you probably end up taking pgs or flats in satya right so these two people like had their flats in satya and stuff so they, they used to hang out like at any point of the day and this is what happens because eventually after a certain period of time your society becomes like your family in college life so you just call upon them and like hang out with them a lot so this is why we've captioned this as we can be found hanging out in satya niketan a lot and um, also the particular sport that we consider specifically to be our like society's chilling sport is uh, high on bowlers and uh, it's just a small like cafe sort of a thing in satya and we hang out there a lot after monks and like even during people speak we went there a couple of times and that's just basically the sport where we chill all the time muskan do you want to add yeah 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 hob particularly hob is like our priceless society jam for years i think four five years at least for four five generations venki devsock has been there and hum rona dhona karte hain apni debates ka rona dhona karte hain apne courses ka rona dhona karte hain gpa ka oh meri gpa gir gayi oh fuck my life is ruined etc <laughs> while also eating the incredible burgers so there and somehow the chai has foam which is something that we never have been able to solve but hum chal dete hain ki koi nahi farak nahi padta so it's literally like hob is as it's written here our unofficial headquarters yes absolutely really, yeah fun times so as i've already mentioned it multiple times but just to put it out there as cliche as it might sound we are like a family and eventually once you delve into months months and months into your college life you'll realize that you have to find a support system within college and that doesn't necessarily always come out of your class groups or other places but eventually it becomes your society and the society that you choose to contribute your maximum amount of time for because i think let's just face it and like i think a lot of most of us will agree to this that du isn't necessarily academic heavy it's also really known for its society and the type of cultures that exists within du and that is a main attraction point for everyone who joins du so every society is like a family at the end and we have and i think the friendships that you create out of spaces like debating last not just for the 3 years of your college life but also for long afterwards because even for me personally and that goes for a lot of members within my society the type of best friends that we've created inside our college life have taken the form of members who were a part of our debating society were people who we met through the debating society in the first year and eventually our friendship just grew deeper and deeper and now we call ourselves best friends now that we are in second and third year so it is like a family at the end of the day we create like a support system for one another we try to be there for one another in like difficult times and we spend a lot like a large chunk of our uh, time in college together debating over weekends meeting for mocks every day sometimes like just ditching classes just to hang out and like chill at hob or like discussing stuff related to debating like motions and everything we do that all the time so it is like eventually it j- does become like a family do you want to add okay now uh, we'll move forward to what all you can expect from debating society and how it will add to your growth because i know we've been talking a lot about debating and everything but i think everyone joins a particular society with certain ideas about how it can contribute to their growth so i'll just elaborate on that a little bit and i'll also talk about how in particular debating has transformed my life and muskan you can also uh, share your experience yeah yeah first and foremost an elite taste in memes 
<laughs> that's something that as a devsoc we can be proud of we make better memes than we can debate and some of us debate very well so that clearly is visible through this presentation <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so um the first point is better understanding of the world through a lot of training sessions and workshops that we organize i'd be honest the first time i started debating i didn't understand what feminism even means or what what is the situation of global politics right now or what is trump doing right now i didn't have any intricate idea of what was going on in the world but it was only when i started debating and i joined the society that i could clearly see things around me every day in my life i used to come from very different set of opinions and beliefs about how the world functions around me and when i joined debating and i came across so many good things that existed in the space which meant i attended a lot of sessions on feminism that our seniors took a lot of sessions on international relations that our seniors took throughout when i started attending those sessions and when i started debating on tournament at tournaments on my weekends i could start to understand the politics that was going around me a lot better and i could understand the nuances of the society a lot more intricately than i used to before because a lot of us came come from like small schools and like different towns that exist within india and we do not have a good enough understanding of things like this we just what we were forced to do was just stick to the curriculum that was being taught to us in these schools and especially for people who come from science background like me and uskan we didn't even have subjects like pol science or history in our courses in 11th and 12th we left those subjects back in 10th so to develop like a good understanding of what history is and what politics is it was only through debating that i could start doing these things and just get a better perspective in life so this is how like debating can have an effect on your life yeah adding to that i think a uh, a perception of this is a lot of this sounds like purely like academic or nerdy that oh you know like some functioning about politics etc so probably you can contribute to your 5 pm family ke sath chai ka sessions but things like sociology or feminism or society in general when you debate them when you read of them they affect you as a person they just make you a better kind or more sympathetic person and we think that is something that we have learned and achieved generally like personally speaking i know for a fact that i was so privileged i was lost in my privilege before i joined tepsoc and now every day i i check my privilege and i understand how things are functioning and that's something that has become part of me as a person now because essentially you debating makes you a better person all in all and it affects your life to make you kinder to make you better to make you more sympathetic to everybody's conditions around you because it's not just nerdy or you know a uh, humanities ka subject etc these things are part of your identity and these things are part of your attitude and personality and essentially make you a better person so yeah yes, yeah exactly so uh, moving forward uh, just like elaborating more on how debating can contribute to your life another thing that you will really pick up from debating is a good reading habit and I, when we start debating like in our first year in fact after our first and first and second session as well we start to encourage everyone who exists in the society to start reading up a lot it doesn't have to be restricted to any particular topic you just read whatever you like whatever on the internet that you think is sounds interesting you can pick up any article any book and you just start reading that and eventually like after a certain period of time you start reading so much that an article that you probably read in like 5 to 6 minutes you will now start to read in 2 3 minutes because you're that accustomed to reading so much because a lot of the arguments that we build uh, a lot of the things that we say in our speeches do not just come directly in our head these are things that we have built up in our head through reading a lot of books through reading a lot of literature through reading tons of articles and news articles and watching a lot of youtube videos from vox and other websites that will give you informative analysis of what is actually going on in the world so 
some a good reading habit is something that you that you eventually like develop in debating irrespective of whether you were an avid reader before or not so even if you do not have like a good reading habit right now or you don't like books a lot or like large texts eventually after a certain point of time after like the first few months in debating you will start reading a lot and this will add to your life in many different ways which i will elaborate on later so just as a reminder a lot of us just buy books and like don't read them so just debating like buying books should not be the hobby the end point of the, that should actually be going ahead and like reading those books right so this is something that we do in debating society a lot the next thing is public speaking skills and a great personality builder so i think a lot of us came from introverted backgrounds where we couldn't speak out aloud in front of crowds and were just generally very shy i think those things change once you actually start to start to attend tournaments and mocks and actually start debating and having like a good personality in general i can assure you the re- the reason why i'm able to speak fluently in english for a, such a long duration right now is because i have debated a lot throughout the course of my college life and the years that i have spent debating have actually added up to my personality build up as well so the type of public speaking skills that all of us in the debating society have developed are also through debating and just like a generally good personality is something that you will develop after like debating for a long duration of time okay muskan do you want to talk about this slide i think we have talked a lot about how we're a family and we yeah. do stuff together but yeah this is also from people speak only as asta said fantastic time of the year some of the best probably days in first year that i had and i can't i'm so so looking forward to people speak this year even though it's likely to be online but either way um we're just really all very close together and we love each other and we fight a lot simply by virtue of being debaters but we still are very good friends and our fights never deter the friendships that we have so which is a good thing because then we can fight more and that builds up again critical thinking skills because you want friends to criticize you when need be not just fair weather friends and that are the kind of people that you're likely to find in devsog just because we're debaters and therefore we talk a lot and we it's all we do literally <laughs> bolte hai latte hai but then saath mein khane bhi chale jaate hain <laughs> so yeah that generally is a very good and healthy environment to be in and a fun environment to be in so that is it yeah absolutely moving forward um career stuff i know a lot of us came from backgrounds where we are really worried about what we are going to pursue next and i'm sure by the point by the time you guys enter your third year all of you will be really worried about what you have to pursue later on and uh, just that general anxiety will enter your system like it did for me so uh, i can assure you that debating will continue contributing in your life no matter where you are so i don't so what i'm trying to say is that debating isn't just like a family thing or like something you do for fun in your first year and then let go of i think debating for me personally and also for all the members of our society has added value to our life till the time that we have left college and being a third year i can assure you that despite having like tough deadlines and having a lot of things that i have on my hands like i have to sit for placements and i have to give entrance examinations and i have to sit for my college exams i think in the midst of this all of this debating has still continued to add value to my life and here are a few points how it has added value to my life the first point is that after a certain point of time when you debate so much and you read so much your gk will generally grow so much that it will become a plus point in any interview that you give in your final year so when i was sitting next to interviewers during my uh, interviews in like the placement process i just knew so much about what was happening around me that whenever they asked me a question about current affairs or like economy ki situation or anything like that i was able to tackle those questions quite easily because i was a debater secondly thanks muskan <laughs> secondly 
it gives you the ability to converse with the structure so it's not like you're just going in any direction and just saying whatever comes to your mind anything that you say will come with a structure in your mind because after giving 720 speeches for 3 years you start to understand how what is the right way to put things forward and how, what is the right way to analyze those things third thing you will have just to get better impact within conversations so this doesn't necessarily have to be restricted to a formal environment but also to conversations that you have in informal environments with your friends you will understand that the type of impact that you're able to create on the other person is larger than it used to be before because you have debated so much over the course of the last few years lastly a good reading habit will 100% help you in entrances and i can assure you from my personal experience because a lot of the entrances that you give so if, for example if you're planning to give cat in your last year or gmat right the thing with this particular entrance examinations is your time speed so you have to be very uh, you have to read passages very quickly and rcs very quickly and being someone from a debating background and having just generally a good habit of reading every day through these articles and everything you will in your head like be able to read better and like when kept against a person who does not come from such a background you will perform better than them in such entrance examinations because you will already have such a good reading habit so all of these are plus points that will definitely add to your uh, skills when you are pursuing anything related to your career and also you can always put like a linkedin this thing on your profile that you work for the debating society and i think that also gives you an edge with the interviewers and stuff when you put it in your cv like that do you want to add something okay uh having talked a lot about what our society is all about and what we offer to you we also have a certain level of expectations from everyone who is going to join the society because i think we received over 400 applications for this particular society and unfortunately we won't be able to accept all those applications and how we will be selective for anyone that we select for the society is on the following metrics and how these will determine your inclusion in the society three points first thing is we keep around four to five five max like mocks per week which means that like a one one and a half hour sessions per day matlab ek din mein in one day so we expect you to have attendance in at least two to three of them like you don't have to attend all five just come for any two or three of those mocks and as long as you keep doing that we will consider you to be an active member of the debating society and we will love to have you second thing as i mentioned before we have tournaments almost every week or every weekend of the month so basically what happens is that in these tournaments they last for like saturdays and sundays and sometimes also mondays so you are expected to attend at least like one or two of these tournaments even if you do one that is also fine like although after a certain point of time when you actually start to get truly really into debating you would honestly want to attend every single tournament that happens and this is something that happened for both like muskan and also me like we ended up attending every tournament that happened in our first year so uh, but the minimum basic requirement is definitely one to two tournaments at least as a bare minimum thirdly having mentioned the first two points i also want to mention that we are very very flexible in terms of like understanding if a certain person may need a break from the society and you just generally aren't in a good mental space to participate in tournaments or attend mocks and you just want to take a cool off like from everything that is happening in debating for like a month or something we completely accept that type of uh, thing and we are very very like open to people not being a part of the society like not being very active in the society for a month or so duration because and i think i have also like done it like in my second year when in in the in my third semester i wasn't in a great mental space and i just didn't feel like debating so i told my president that i wouldn't be participating in a lot of tournaments for this month but i will come back after that month and everything was fine like because nobody questions you or nobody asks you any questions because so we are very flexible and we allow everyone to take breaks every once in a while when they have other priorities at hand so this is about it muskan do you want to add something 
Yeah, in terms of being flexible, I think that perhaps we are one of the most accommodating societies in the college. In terms of which, even if you need to take a break longer than that for a reason that we feel is valid, that is something that we allow, and you don't even have to tell the entire council. You can tell one member of the council, and if we feel that your reason is valid, we will give you that leeway and we will give you that flexibility. So, in terms of that, we think that we're really accommodating, and we certainly have accommodated a lot of people even before and after society. Uh, sorry, before and after auditions. And in terms of timing, also we likely to like we shifted this orientation also because many people reached out to us personally about their classes, etc. And generally speaking, we are accommodative of uh, your personal lives and your mental spaces and your social life also. So that is something that I don't feel that you need to worry about. That being said, DevSoc is also like a time-filling society, and you're likely to spend a lot of time into the society. But we think that you'll want to do it because it's really, really fruitful, and you take back a lot of things from it. So that's that. Great. <clears throat> so that being said, uh, this is all that we had to say. We didn't want to make this entire presentation boring or like. very monotonous that's why we tried to make it as fun as we possibly could so uh, this brings us to the end of our presentation and we are now going to move forward with questions so anything that you want to ask us you can ask we are going to be here for the next half an hour to address any queries that you might have you can in fact instead of typing you can just like uh, switch on your mic and ask okay So the first Can question. Can you elaborate we... on recruitment process? Yeah. Okay. So uh, now that our orientation is done, we will open our registrations for about a week or so, and we will accept registrations for anybody who wants to appear for the auditions process. So the auditions that we are going to take will have two rounds minimum, might stretch to three rounds, and uh, they will last over the course of I think three to four days maximum. and during those 3 4 rounds we will uh, just have auditions and we will gen generally try to gauge your interest in our society and how you might be fruitfully able to contribute to us and one thing that i really really want to clarify here is that you don't need to have previous debating experience to be a part of our debating society in fact muskan does and a lot of other people who are a part of our society did not come from debating backgrounds i was personally privileged enough to be a part of my mun society when i was in school but apart from that also i didn't have any debating experience a lot of the people who join our society do not come from conventionally debating backgrounds because parliamentary debating in general does not mean that you just give conventional debate speeches and they're very generally very different from how cds work which is why you are welcome to apply for our society if even if you haven't even given one public speech in your life and that's completely okay in fact i can assure you that with no experience to very little experience also you will end up like making becoming a member of the society even if uh, because what we try to gauge is not how loudly you speak what we try to gauge is how interested you are in becoming a member of the society what's how much you can analyze things and what's your general interest in this side muskan do you want to tell like how on what basis are you going to shortlist the students for the next round so the first round uh, abhi to anybody can apply like there's no limit to anybody applying for the society like all 80 people who are there in the meeting can apply and then we will have our first round for which we will send you the details and stuff over mail so we generally don't disclose what we are going to do in the round like what one day before the recruitment process begins that's why we are not going to reveal the details of what is exactly going to happen in those rounds but whatever it there is going to happen we'll mail you all the details like one day in advance and also we will explain it to you when we are conducting the auditions so how many right. people will be selected at the last yeah that question how many can apply and how many get in 
a few people are asking. There's, as Asta said, there's no limit to how many people can apply. The entire college can apply, and that's totally fine. How many people get in? That's a question we're frequently asked. We don't have a fixed number of slots for good reason, because we don't want to limit the freshers that we think will be good for our society. That being said, we also don't take every Tom, Dick, and Harry who comes into audition. And basically, we screen through you. And generally, for our society, 300, 350 plus people apply. And as a trend, we take like 15-ish people. But again, that's how much we want to. So fact, I think that's that. Yeah, and I think uh, like in my year, uh, the society selected like 30 members. So it just varies. Actually, it depends on the type of candidates that we'll see. So, mm -hmm. for example, if I find like out of the 300 that apply, I find like 40 right people, I will select 40. Don't worry about that. So, if you are a deserving candidate, you will get selected. You don't have to worry about numbers. Yeah. Select only. yeah. Which are the prominent debates that you attend within the Delhi circuit and outside? I think we send a contingent to almost every tournament, every good tournament with a good uh, motions panel that we come across. In the Delhi circuit, in the city in general, we send uh, contingents into the IITs, into NSIT, into colleges in the Delhi University circuit. There's a great tournament which we were planning to attend. We couldn't due to coronavirus. A great tournament in Chandigarh by Punjab Engineering College. So generally, we go to a lot of very famous debates. Our own tournament, People Speak, is one of the top tournaments in uh, perhaps the NCR circuit or even greater than that. So that's that. How many people will you take in the society? We've already answered that. What are the qualities we expect from freshers? Very good question, Ritika. We expect our freshers to be extremely interested in growth. And that's something that we think is largely de uh, determinant of how good a debater you become. Because I'll tell you what, some of the best debaters that have emerged from our societies are not people who just, you know, had debating in their blood or like people who just knew oration policy. These are people who read and they grew and they took their seniors advice and help and generally worked upon themselves because we are like mentoring you. We won't be able to spoon, food, uh, spoon feed arguments to you or speeches to you. Those are things that you construct yourself. But in general, we expect you to have willingness of growth we expect you to want to learn about all of the different things that we debate on and in general we think that even during auditions that is a feature that we will look at and that's most prominent to us as recruiters when we watch you in auditions i hope that answers your question Ritika. Asta, do you have anything to say no i think that's pretty much about it <clears throat> Okay, how many societies are you part of? Not many, but then again, there is no limit. We are not imposing a limit on you as to how many societies you can take part in. But generally speaking about ECA, uh, debate societies take a lot of time. Music societies take up time. Dance societies take up time. So drama societies take up time. So generally don't apply for every society out there. Apply for societies you're actually interested in, and then we'll accept you accordingly. Please don't apply in a society just because it's like cool or fashionable to do so. Um, how much how much do we have to do? Can we manage other societies with DevSoc and academics as well? I tell you our general secretary Mahima is in she's in DevSoc, she's in Girl Up, she's in um PCL, if I'm not wrong, and um She's in 180 DC mm -hmm. and she handles academics very well. She's, yeah, she's one of the smartest in the society. So essentially, it's about uh, how heavy your course is. A, my course is super heavy and I know that I cannot afford another society. I won't be able to do justice to that society or to my depth work if I join another society. But if you feel that your course is lighter, say uh, BCom people are able to join many societies, 
so if you feel that that is something that you as a person can handle if that's a hard work that you can afford and do justice to then feel free to but then again there is no particular number or limit that we can give you regards to that you talked about gpa dipping so how do you manage your attendance in academics while well, also okay, attendance yeah look Haan. the gpa dropping part was a joke more than it was a reality yeah. i think everyone in our societies and health narayan narayan tu bata yaar gpa iski 10 hai narayan ki gpa <laughs> it's basically not about that uh, even i am a part of like multiple societies i was there in my com sort of so basically my course is become on it so i was a part of common society as well and uh, i'm a part of project yu as well and i'm part of debating as well so it's not like that you can't manage multiple societies it's just that you need to prioritize which societies do you want to manage i think uh, as muskan already said that societies like dance and all that they are like very time taking societies so we would generally suggest that don't apply in like every society but secondly about gpa so yes it was a joke it's not like that because i have a very good gpa to be very honest uh, and it's not like that i think it's uh, you will be able to manage a lot and it's just that debating is like a very fun activity you just find interest in it it's not like you give up all your studies and just like penetrate yourself into it Yeah, in fact, like most of the society people even had like hundred percent attendance like last year. Like the Vyanshu had hundred percent. Who was the ex president, by the way? He had hundred percent attendance in his classes, and then Anushka had like ninety, eighty something. So it's I don't think it's personally about you know debating society, eating up your time, and just you not having any time to do anything else. It's about how you balance. and how you create that balance in your college life about managing your extracurricular and your academics and any other passion that you might have. and narayan hair has a 9 plus gpa so become honors wale se puchna jana ki kaise isne manage kiya yeah and in fact attendance ka bhi it's like uh, that you it's not about it's, it's not an issue attendance ka because uh, even i had like attendance 90% ke aas pass which not like that so you will always attend classes but also there's a uh, like a personal benefit and personalized goodies that we get get from the society is attendance so what basically happens is 17% of your classes uh, like at classes held get reduced so ultimately since the denominator gets reduced the uh, attendance automatically gets increased and that is why i mean like my attendance if it's fluctuating around 84 or 83 it goes up to 98 and 99 and 100 so you will do not worry about that yeah you will get yeah, society attendance as well hmm that i wanted to address two things particularly ek to society attendance given that we are registered with the admin of the society any ecs society that you are part of will give you 17% attendance and that's something so tumhari attendance pe directly add ho jata hai at the end of the semester that's something that we're responsible for but secondarily i'm from bio background and i want to address this particularly to people who are from science courses science courses have practical classes right which is which go up to 4 pm 5 pm especially when you're in your college which will also like clash with your notes two three things a practical classes ki attendance is not a part of your final semester ki attendance b um generally speaking even ki tumhe ec society attendance milti hai even if you have to miss some classes for society that is something that you will be able to afford to do given that we are also as a society giving you some attendance at the end of the semester but you can't use that attendance just to laze around on campus etc because that attendance is not a fixed number but works as a ratio to the attendance you have already that is uh, that's a math that we can explain to you separately if you're super interested in it but uh, it works as a ratio so if you have high attendance in classes then we'll be able to give you higher additional ec attendance if you have moderate attendance in your theory classes then we'll be able to give you moderate additional ec attendance but generally no one falls short of attendance in depsoc basically it's, it's easy to cross out this is that you've attended already in college so why yeah 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 how so, do you manage your attendance in academics that doesn't mean you can move around kya you need ha ha matlab just to make a bag and and uh, someone asked about courses like i am in maths honors narayan is in bcom honors and muskan is in uh, 
I want to say zoology, but I am not. Zoology. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah zoology. I'm bio represented. I'm the only person from bio probably in the city who's in Depsoc. So that's why I'm rapping science kids everywhere. <laughs> okay. How much time we need to give to the society? Um. Abhi uh, ha, abhi address kya. Entire weekends. Each tournament is an entire weekend. And ha, the boy one to two tournaments. Yeah, that slide is up. One to two tournament per month. Tournaments take up your entire weekends, and two to three mocks per week. Mocks are generally one one and a half hour long. Um, that's the length of our general debate, and that I think is a reasonable time to ask as a society. Uh, do you guys what course are you? Okay, we talked about that. Do you recruit members from second years? Yes, we will. And it's also procedure. Like yeah the um like having giving time for the society it's not like that i mean like you are just giving your time and imposing the time on the society i think this society will generally attract your interest and it will build your interest so that automatically comes out to be that you being extremely interested in the society we don't do uh, i mean like boring stuff or something like that that doesn't interest you obviously we are going to gauge your interest while we recruit you and while uh, through the recruitment process that we'll be taking so it's not like that that you impose your interest it's absolutely about that how much willing you are to to be a part of the society and also like how much you are willing to learn yeah <clears throat> uh next okay. question what's the procedure for recruitment we have released the detailed procedure on our instagram and facebook handles and those texts will reach you on your whatsapp group also we're not announcing them right now but we'll have two to three rounds later um we'll talk about this does this happen with sports as well the attendance benefit i'm not sure it does sports and ec are a separate category am i right yeah, yeah. i mean like uh, even if they are separate category you still get attendance in sports as well as far as i know same i think you get some know. benefit i know that but i don't have a detailed knowledge of that all right other questions more questions any doubts that um, you may have any any anything that you're unsure about go ahead and ask us uh, yes i actually had a question um uh, when uh, can you hear me yeah yeah, yeah. we can hear you yeah uh, okay so uh, when i debated yeah, yeah. in high school okay uh, yeah so when i debated in high school uh, the content and the context of the you know uh, the portion was very fluid you know it could range from existentialism to where uh, class antagonism anything so um it was a little different you know uh, so i've always been concerned about this facet that do i need to be good in all um, you know like uh, like uh, a good at the economical portions good at sociological portions of uh, a particular field or do i have to be you know specialized in a particular field what helps that's what i'm trying to answer okay. okay. instead of all three of us answering yeah. 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 okay so um, okay. i'll be very honest it's not like that you need to be pro in everything it's not absolutely not like that because to be very honest as we said in the beginning as well that all three of us come from different backgrounds so obviously we specialize in like different subjects and know absolutely different things right so and muskan will relate to this so when we were there in like uh, in our first tournament that was ggs there was an economics tournament and probably i was the uh, like only like there were two people from economics and like i was from commerce background another one from uh, economic and muskan didn't generally have like much amount of idea about economics so we like took a chance there and talk about that right if there's like science fiction or tech based then i think the people from science background always like contribute just like to going over that i think it's not like you need to be like pro in everything because i literally suck at international relations <laughs> i say that openly but that doesn't mean i don't debate on international relations motion right so it's absolutely like that i mean like you will generally develop interest we just expect you to just have like even if it's like surface level idea just like understand you need to understand the principle behind that even if it's like not just to like usa or canada ke beech mein kya ho raha hai just understand it as we just as we said that we just need analytical skills and that's all muskan if you want to add you can like 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of that, I'm I'm still I I call myself the vice president of the society, but I can't do shit at economics motions, and that's something that I admit openly. And I've always had my teammates carry me. That's an advantage of having a team and not individual debates. That even if you're debating on something that you have zero or negative idea about, you will have teammates who will help to contribute to you, and that's something I'm. understood in economics also even if i don't know things through my analytical skills if i'm given like a basis of an argument i'm like <laughs> able to build up on that using analytics and pure logic and no background knowledge that being said we expect you to slowly grow your background knowledge by the course of staying in the society and practicing and debating with us however by the and this is natural also given that we also have all sorts of topics from game of thrones and pop culture to hardcore economics that being said you will grow a a better taste for some topics and you will not like some other topics and that differs from person to person but that being said you will debate on everything every possible topic on the arena out there and generally we hope that you are able to gain more knowledge and we expect you to try and gain more knowledge in everything and everywhere yeah i think that pretty okay. much answers the question really well so if any other questions are there you guys can ask yeah shantavi says if you run more than one society will you get attendance from each of them a uh, good question is it just to collect it's, it's a collective i don't join for little 17 17 mila ke meri 170 ho jayegi aise to i mean like nobody will come to the college it's not like that you will get attendance from like one society and also i think it's not like every society gives you attendance so yeah. i am mm-hmm. there in terms of it doesn't provide me attendance i get attendance from eds um and there are like i guess placement cell or like an actors these two three or four societies give you generally give you attendance it's not like uh, like every society gives you attendance and also attendance only flows from one society uh, it's not like sab ke sab kuch mil jayega yeah it's a collective 17% Tanishk Bansal, can we join the society in second year? Yes, you can. Applications are open. I mean, not right now. We will open applications, and you're free to apply. And can we leave after first year? See, there is no bar to leaving generally, but leaving speaks bad faith, and it's not something that any society welcomes in general, because leaving either gives the impression that you were never interested in the society that the society was just your side bitch and um secondarily it even gives the impression that you don't want to try hard enough to excel the activity that the society is carrying out on so generally if you apply for the society make sure that you have interest in debating in general and as i said don't do it just because it's cool or fashionable or your friend is doing it ya tumhe craze hai aur flaunt karna hai ki oh main to kya societies mein hu that sock is one of them and i'm one, in one of the best debating societies in the country to maine wahan ki that sock join kar liya but i'm being completely useless in the group that is not something that we welcome so generally we don't encourage leaving for obvious reasons but if due to any unfortunate circumstance you feel like you have to and you just can't carry on then there's no technical or like formal bar like you can leave aisa kuch nahi hai yeah. so we'll but that's not something that we just uh, i mean like as soon as you come in the recruitment process we are definitely going to gauge your interest and just as muskan said that if you are generally interested then please apply uh it's like going to the second question that is do you consider individual wait 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 yeah. wait ask her you have anything to say nahi nahi you guys are answering it's like you guys are doing a good enough job to karte raho i don't want too many people to answer for overlap hi hota hai all right you, mm-hmm. just so okay, sham the next question do you consider individual interests on topics while sending people to tournaments every tournament has a range of topics some of which you will be very interested in and some of which you will be disinterested in that is also an advantage of team debates and individual interest in topics is not generally a basis on which we form teams or send people into tournaments because tournaments don't have a, a uniform theme tournaments generally have like there's an entire system of five preliminary rounds and then four to five 
post breaks rounds there's like an entire system and every round has a different theme so you'll see a variety of themes which at each tournament that you go to and therefore we don't think that individual interest on topics is anyway uh, a metric to gauge you on who decides who's going to go to which tournament right so um we have a whatsapp group and whenever any tournament announces their uh, whenever any society announces their tournament we send the details on the group and we uh, ask you guys to apply ki if you're free drop your name in a text and then we the council make teams and we send you into tournaments we are not able to send everyone who applies for a tournament we are able to only send a limited number of people because we have fixed contingent numbers that that's something that the council decides cherry picking for each tournament and um that's that so also like here, uh, the council decides yeah so it's also like uh, in your first year the council has that leeway that uh, decide who is going to which tournament in which team once you have spent around an year in the society after that uh, what generally happens is we generally cross teams and what is meant by cross team is basically that we from the debating society individuals from different colleges they make a team so i probably debated in uh, a tournament with people from mlnc so it's also like three people are required in a team so you make a team out of three individuals from three different colleges from the same college it's nothing like that so after one year that the cross team is allowed but for one year the council has a leeway that they will decide uh, like in which yeah. and to which tournament the individuals go also as a general clarification don't worry about ki you will be forced in certain teams or you will be made to feel uncomfortable i mean as like the present council i can assure you that the four of us will take care of your needs that considering if you are uncomfortable debating next to a certain person or you generally don't feel like debating and you feel like aging we will take your choices into accommodation and we will try to give you the best option that we can from our end and i think this happened like multiple times like last year what happened was that in a people speak we had three people free and the three of them didn't want to debate together so as a result of that we made sure that we changed that team and the freshers felt comfortable in the team that they were debating in and also secondarily i would also like to clarify that once you have your first few breaks and instead of saying breaks i'd just say once you start to do well in the society and we can see that you are participating actively and you are going for a lot of tournaments we give you a lot more leeway in the sense that we will allow you to you know make your own teams and go to whichever tournament you want to go and even like cross start crossing from the first year as well although it's generally preferred that you debate in institutional teams but whatever you feel like doing you can start doing once we can see that level of commitment in you that you are participating a lot and you are active yeah for further context institutional team means team from within venki devsok cross teams means you have friends from probably kisi bhi aur college ka devsok and you want to in individual capacity team up and debate with them adjing or adjudication is a fancy word for judging debates so either you will be speaking or you will be judging people who speak and you will be speaking yourself too so that is a part of the format also but all these roles are played by students only there is no like invited judges from industries etc okay do we get a certificate from the society that we have served yes you will but not every year you get a society when you graduate from uh, you get a certificate when you graduate from college while sending in tournaments and conducting mocks etc do you also keep our semester exam schedule in mind oh yeah for sure absolutely what is the format of debate in college the format is parliamentary debating there's within parliamentary debating different formats the one that we usually follow is called asian parliamentary debating format there's also a very popular emerging format called the british oh parliamentary debating format we're not into that as much as society i don't think we've had any bp mock but we follow asian parliamentary generally and um basically saying it's like two teams going up against each other each team has three people and there's a particular um flow of speeches and timing of speeches and roles of speeches and how judges are supposed to judge etc all of which are uh, complicated nuances that even i think i am not fully 
um, inclined with or I'm not fully <laughs> understand at this point, but you can't fully understand it. It's like really complex, but general things are coming to understand after it's pretty soon. Uh, yeah. There are two teams, and considering about Asian parliamentary format, there are two teams. Each team has three individuals. Three are uh, like both the teams go one for the topic, which is called the government or the one who proposes the motion, that is proposition, and the other one is called opposition, who will be opposing the motion or will be against. You constantly debate amongst yourself, like one individual goes, and there would be one judge who will be judging the tournament. So obviously, like there are intricate details you'll understand once I mean, you get into So side. what exactly happens in that? Mahesh, if you're super interested in the nuances of Asian parliamentary, feel free to reach me personally over WhatsApp. But I don't think in the orientation there's much point in telling you the details of speaker roles or how you're supposed to establish your case or what an argument is or what a good argument is. That's something that we'll teach you once you're in society, but we will teach you, uh, we will teach all our recruits that. So mm -hmm. if you're very curious and like you really want to know more details, just Google it and you'll find tons of like YouTube videos and content online that will give you detailed info about what Asian mm -hmm. parliamentary debating is. We don't want to take it up right now because it's a little complex and it'll take up too much time. Okay, mm -hmm. how good do one, does one have to be in terms of communication? You don't have to be like a professional or super good at it, as we already mentioned. Feel free to apply for our society if you have zero background in debating. I wasn't a debater. I've done a couple of MUNs at best, and I was like an okay-ish speaker or like below average to average speaker before I joined DEPSOC. We think that you'll better yourself in communication over the course yeah. of uh, participating in a society. So you don't have to be brilliant, but like tick tock is what we'll say. Also, I mean, like, uh, once you get into Asian parliamentary, I think a lot of individuals, even I personally came with a background from conventional debating. So a lot of us have this in mind because conventional debate usually, like, you know, function on how flowery words do you use and how, you know, structured and coherent you are while giving your speech and also like the fluency perspective. I think in Asian parliamentary uh, format, it's basically that a large chunk of attention is given to the content that you are speaking. It's not like, say, like in which way the person is speaking, it's not, not less of a concern. And it, it's also important that how structured your speeches are, I mean, like at the end of the day, but just that people need to be focusing on the content and the clarity that they bring. So it's not like, oh, how much flowery words do I use? I need to have like an amazing vocab to speak about it. It's not like that. Uh, you just need to have like, the way you present, it's just you need to just clarity. Right? Mm, yeah, that Joy pretty team. much sums it up. Yes, Himanshu. Uh, sorry to disturb, but I joined a bit late. I just wanted to know that if I have missed uh, any important details that might be helpful uh, in any date regarding the cycle and such things. If I have missed. Okay, I think we'll sending we'll be sending in the orientation PPT, so that's not a problem. And we're not giving out tips, we're just answering all your questions about auditions, etc. Um, uh, what so roles? We haven't revealed any dates, so we'll be taking up like recruitment process. The details will be forwarded on the group. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if it is uh, comfortable, if uh, I can get a brief about what all has happened before the... You can probably personally contact us over like WhatsApp or Instagram or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Ishan, Mathur, what roles do you guys do like PMD, PM Web? Okay. Just to for context, these are the speaker roles each team has in Asian Parliamentary. Again, not to intimidate you or <laughs> anything. Um, it's really fluid. We don't impose any roles on you. Tum jo comfortable hai, tum kar sakte and beginning, may we encourage you to try every possible role in the format and then generally see which you are comfortable with and which you have confidence in. But then again, um, I personally like to go whip, and I am not so bad at PMN. 
that was a bag i'm very good really like that i mean like you don't impose certain things that which role will you do or something like that once you get into your team you definitely find your comfort zone you decide amongst yourself which role one is doing and it's absolutely fine it's not like hum tumhe bilkul bhejenge ki bhai tumhe pm hi karna hai it's not like that people generally have different comfort zones like muskan has comfort zone in whip i have a comfort zone in going as a first speaker and pm opposition there are like lot me so they are basically intricate details can take up later on yeah again for context guys you don't have to have this knowledge to apply for society none of us did before we got in so it's totally okay if you don't know what this is shamvi singh in debates if the topic has some political history or probably if you have political ideas or views can you state them or do you always have to maintain a neutral stand on political issues from the tournament pov please don't be neutral you cannot be neutral in times of raging fires that being said um you have to make cases to push your something we call burden which means um whatever the motion requires you to do you must do that for good reason and for obvious reason we will not ask you to argue problematic notions and we will not ask you to say problematic things all of our debates from both sides from uh, for or and against will not be problematic things but they will still be opposite and that's something that's not a concept that i understood pehle that's okay but now that i've seen so many political debates it's a concept i do completely understand so neutral is not a good word for it but sensitive and unproblematic is something that we're looking for yeah and also and just ha asa just generally i i don't think you know coming just from like 12 years of school experience you will understand a lot of things right now all we expect out of you is just a general level of courtesy and sensitivity towards the people around you and i think that will take you like to far off places even if you have certain belief systems right now if you come across new ideas your perception towards those ideas and your ability to change yourself according to the circumstances is what matters the most because not everyone has access to everything in school settings and the type of backgrounds that all of us come from as long as you are sensitive and willing to learn everything will work out fine with for you in the society yeah and also just like um, as like both of them have covered just to be sensitive about what you are talking but also i just wanted to address one point that uh, as like, what i get from this question is that even if you have certain ideas about say like political history or anything like that we just need you to understand the nuances of it and you will understand it after a certain point in time when you are in the society you'll understand how it impacts multiple individuals on and on what level so you'll get an idea about that but considering the fact i just want to clarify one thing that when there are like intricate motions you definitely have certain information like pre given information that is given to you what you are like what is the background of it so you did you not supposed to be like an absolutely pro in having information about every political party that is there in the country or in the world so we definitely in like complex motions we still give you like information what the debate is generally about we do not need to worry about that oh i need to understand and know everything that is going on in the world if there are certain things that are not so popular or something like that you will definitely get context to it any other questions how much time do you usually get to prepare for tournament so basically uh, whenever there's a tournament around what we generally do is the mock session mock session basically means practice session so we we'll definitely have practice debates and it's not like that uh, whenever we are scheduling a practice tumhe tabhi mock karna hai i mean like if there are enough people probably like we used to mock daily whenever the college was open and after that we took it little time to you know adjust ourselves to these online platforms so in like college time when there were offline classes tab to daily mocks hote the so like practice sessions hote the but also regarding say like um, how much time do you usually get to prepare i think before the tournament mocking and uh, i mean just like practicing uh, debate know. and during basically you get around 30 minutes to prepare for your case so basically whenever once the motion is released you get 30 minutes to prepare for the debate yeah i think yeah in in that sense i think you slightly misunderstood the question 
you get to prepare for tournament dekho tournament mein you have many rounds which means you will have probably on day one say you have three debates those three debates will have different different themes and um, this is a part of the format you get 20 to 30 minutes as a team to prepare your entire case but the tournament entirely doesn't have any like preparation timing or any such concept at all because in in that sense we debate impromptu which means ki if my debate is tomorrow on saturday i don't have like a motion ki aaj mujhe is pe padhna hai aur aaj mujhe ye karna hai it's like consider it similar to swimming for example it's not like you get like three days for swimming prior to a tournament for preparing you have constant box to prepare and practice and better yourself and then on the uh, day of the tournament you throw yourself into the pool with everyone else and see yourself for what metal and skill that you have yeah so basically like all the rounds are usually impromptu i mean yeah, just like yeah, impromptu only is yeah. there a situation where we get a topic we are not at all aware about me in economics constantly that is still okay that doesn't mean you can't make a case because all of our cases are carried across by logic and logic is something that you should be able to do in things that you not aware of how do we get the topic on the spot to speak how do you get the to- through a presentation in an auditorium no it's do we get it's not like uh, uh do we get a topic on the just like it's simple okay so like you will be given motions and then the debate starts 20 minutes from the motion and the debate usually speeches sab kuch mila ke usually last like 50 to 55 minutes and you have to make your entire 50 55 minutes worth of content in that 20 minutes and during the debate also you constantly update your case so these are all things that we'll explain to you how to do but it's not like tumhe abhi topic de diya right now and within a minute you have to start speaking it's not like that you make a case and then you speak impromptu meaning that you write down your points and you discuss your case with your team but you don't like type out entire speeches so in that sense it is extemporary but it's not on the spot do you know the topic beforehand or is it given on the spot okay so we have a general idea of what themes we debate we debate art we debate pop culture we debate economics politics indian and international etc etc there are a few themes that we generally see in debates the topic or the motion particularly are freshly prepared for every debate for every tournament for every motion uh, meticulously by people who are employed by that depth so and um so no you don't know motions beforehand but you could probably know what those motions talk about for example if uh, i say that this house as uh, the feminist movement will legalize prostitution then you didn't know this motion beforehand but you have some information about feminism and some information about prostitution and the law so you put together you sit down with your team and brainstorm and put together a case based off of that all right are there any yeah. auditions or what yeah we'll have auditions i think we'll have two to three rounds and we'll put out the uh, details of the same on our social media facebook and instagram you it will also reach you over whatsapp so muskan drink cool. water it looks like your matlab tumhari awaaz break ho rahi hai I think it's because of my internet. <laughs> Is that it? I so hope you're okay though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Good thing you are not in Jammu. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. We definitely know what's the condition in Jammu. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I really wonder. I definitely have a question. I'll, I'll ask you right now. I mean, uh, how do you guys survive in like peak winters over there? It's basically that. Okay, Actually. हो गया है और लाइक वी आर नाउ यूज टू इट की हाँ भाई इट इज ऑलवेज गोइंग टू बी लाइक दैट वी आर स्कूड मूविंग ऑन If you guys have any questions, 
Yeah, yeah. More questions? Anyone? Mm -hmm. Well, by the way, even if you're not comfortable asking a question over yeah. meet because of being introverted or shy, you can reach us personally over WhatsApp. We're the admins of the WhatsApp group you're part of. Hmm. And also one thing about pertaining, since there are no questions, I'll just like one thing. Uh, motions are related and which topic we'll be debating upon. It's also like you also get choices while debating. So basically, if there is a theme in a particular round, ki, there are also uh, three motions coming up for like one theme. And you need to decide amongst yourself like which motion. I mean, like, that has to be a unanimous decision between the two teams or like the team you're paired against. Uh, and we'll tell you how that exactly happens. So basically, you need to um, you know, decide which motion are you going to debate on. So basically, your preference also gets um, you know, like catered which motion you want to debate upon. So it's also like that. So it's not like you, a motion will be absolutely imposed upon you unless and until it's a post round or say like a finals debate or semi-finals debate. That in that generally happens that one motion is only there, but in usually like preliminary rounds and like the pre pre rounds, it's basically you will get choices and three motions to decide. The friends poster in the background. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I've got friends and I've got Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm crazy about. Pirates of the Caribbean, particularly. And also, I just have this. Big you stand for Johnny Depp and for oh, Captain oh, Jack Sparrow. <laughs> True loyalty to the society. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. If you guys generally want to talk about anything, that's also fine. Like, kuch yeah. hai, yeah. aise, college ke baare mein, not even debating related. Thank they you are, so much. Uh, you Thank are, you. Awesome presentation. You Vinayak made it. BSc honors mathematics. Yeah, I'm I'm from maths. Do we get I'm from okay, chemistry. That so how do we no, 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 no. no, no, no. Huge compliment to my god. That's <laughs> for the content. <laughs>